get ready for the invasion of the three parent babies. Welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. And I have in my hand an article from New Scientist magazine, actually their website, part of their daily news feature, December 9th, 2016. They titled it Exclusive, Mexico Clinic Plans 20, quote, three parent babies in 2017. Uh, we've actually talked about three parent babies on the webcast before. Uh, let me go ahead and use their words here and then I can try to summarize them or explain them if they don't make too much sense. Uh, reading from this article by Michael LePage says, many more three parent babies will soon be on their way. A clinic in Mexico is planning to use the technique in 20 pregnancies in the first half of 2017, according to its medical director, Alejandro Chavez Badiola. It says the first baby to be born using such a technique to prevent passing on genetic disease was born this year. Test results yet to be published have revealed that the baby boy is perfectly healthy, new scientist has been exclusively told. The idea is that the technique called mitochondrial replacement avoids harmful mitochondrial mutations passed from the mother to her children. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, the mitochondria is just a part of the cell. It's not part of the DNA in the nucleus. The mitochondria is a, a, another organelle in the cell and you always get your mitochondria from your mother. It's not combined mother and father. Uh, it works by removing the nucleus from a mother's egg and inserting it into a donor's egg, a donor egg, which also, uh, which has its own nucleus removed. The egg is then fertilized with the father's sperm. So what you've got is you have a, an egg from a mother and the mother has this disease uh, indicated in the mitochondrial DNA, which does have some genetic material. So what they do is they take the nucleus out of the mother's egg, which has the mother's genetic material that's passed on to the child, and puts it inside the egg from a donor woman. So it'll be her DNA in the center, in the nucleus, but the mitochondrial bits will actually have the donor's uh, mitochondrial DNA. And then they just fertilize the egg, like, what's we'll say like normal in vitro fertilization from sperm with the father. Uh, just to wrap up this particular quote, it says, in this way, the embryo gets chromosomes from its mother and father, but the DNA in the mitochondria comes from the donor. The hope is that this should enable children not to inherit harmful mitochondrial mutations from their mothers, but it will mean that they have genetic material from three people. Now, if that's confusing, it doesn't really mean three parents in the full sense of parents. Uh, generally, you have the genetic material that determines what you look like, et cetera, is coming from two people, your mother and your father. And yet your cells will also contain some genetic material from a third person, uh, which is a bit different, clearly. A lot of questions about this. Actually, the article had a fascinating history of this procedure in terms of how it's been developed. And the hope is that people can avoid certain mitochondrial diseases. Now, why am I bringing this up? This really isn't a surprise. Uh, Mexico has been kind of leading the way in some ways in terms of the use of this technique. I'm not harping on this particular technique. What I want to highlight is that we are increasingly living in what seems to be the wild, wild west when it comes to human genetics and reproductive technology. We have this, which we just talked about. We have the potential for designer babies, which some people are planning on proceeding with, where we can use techniques like CRISPR to go edit the DNA of an embryo early on so that we just design it the way we want. We can eliminate disease, but it has the potential also for what color eyes do you want your baby to have? You know, what color hair? Uh, is there a gene we can influence to make the baby smarter, et cetera? Uh, we're looking at, we're on the verge of, really, designer babies. That technology exists. Now, legally, we have Canada changing its laws so that now if they wanted all three of these people could get legal rights as a parent in the case of a three-parent baby. So the legal system is trying to maneuver to understand all these things. If you recall, if you've been watching our webcast, we even did a report how they now have the technology. They can take any cell from your body and actually use it as sort of an egg, and you could literally have two fathers. You could have a man 
and another man, and you just take a cell from one man, uh, uh, make it into an egg, essentially unite it from, with a sperm from another man and a test tube, and then implant it in a woman, and voila, now you've got a baby with genetic material, not just like this, but true genetic material concerning features and the rest from two men. It is crazy. Everything is turning upside down, and people will talk about how they're consulting ethicists and philosophers, etc., but who's not being consulted? That's what I want to say here on this webcast. Who isn't being consulted? God. The actual author of humanity is not in any realistic way or any, any way at all being consulted on how we're tinkering with His creation. And all I have to say is if you don't consult the designer of these systems, and you start tinkering with them like this, eventually you're going to wish you had consulted him. Thanks for watching. Please check out everything we have available at tomorrowsworld.org.